The RTX 5090 graphics card seems to perform better at higher resolutions. So what will it be like in a lower resolution VR headset such as the Quest 3? Well today I'm going to try out a number of different settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. I'm in the Cessna 185 Skywagon Tail Dragger. I'm following the Brazil World update. I'm in Suriname at one of the handcrafted airports. A big welcome back to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thanks very much for watching and let's get started. This is not a setting guide, I'm just showing you various settings and what sort of performance you can expect in the Quest 3. I'm using the headset wirelessly using virtual desktop. Right now I'm getting about 90 frames per second, which is great as my headset is set for 90Hz refresh rate. Nose coming down and speed increasing. Frame time of 18 milliseconds is pretty good for flight sim. The flight was recorded directly in the Quest 3 headset, so the visuals you're seeing probably aren't quite as good as what I'm getting in the headset, but it's pretty close. Please note that some of the judders and stutters that you may see in the video were not apparent to me while I was in the VR headset having the flight. I should have got this video out a whole lot earlier, but to be honest, well I've been having a blast trying out various settings, and we'll have a look at what those are just now. But right now, it's time to turn back towards the airport using a stall turn, which of course is strictly illegal in an aircraft such as the Cessna. But really, who cares? We're having fun. This is how VR should be, getting good frame rates without having to tweak and change everything. Now you can get good performance from a 4090 of course, and I've shown that in an earlier video. The difference with a 5090 is you can ramp up those settings. I originally recorded this video flying in and around Sao Paulo with the photogrammetry and the performance was pretty much the same. But to be honest, the photogrammetry is not great. This area here, well, it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so what are my current settings? Let's take a quick look. Let's head to the settings menu, but I'm just going to pop out of VR first so we don't have the performance table in the way. There we go. I've been getting in and around 90 frames per second fairly consistently. Let's head to the VR menu. Got to say, I'm not a big fan of the menu layout here. And here you can see I'm in TAA mode. My global rendering settings are set to high end. It's as simple as that. We'll dabble into a few other settings just now, but let's get back into VR. There we go. Performance table is back up. Just takes a moment or two to settle down. We're back to 90 frames per second. Latency is 59 milliseconds and frame time is 17 milliseconds. Pretty good. We're just coming over the Suriname River. Absolutely love the brown color. Now a little further on, that'll feed into the Atlantic. We're turning now to bridge. Yes, I know I'm flying like I stole it, but anyone who follows my channel will know that bush flying and if there's a bridge, well, you've just got to fly under it. It's obligatory. As you're probably aware on my channel, I've done a number of videos on VR and flying on the monitor for the RTX 5090 GPU. The single most notable feature of this GPU is its consistency. Typically with fast movements such as this, you would incur quite a bit of juddering and stuttering, but it's here where the 5090 stretches its legs. Okay, it's time now. Let's go and try out a number of different settings and see what sort of performance we can get. Once again, we want to head to our settings menu. Then we're going to select VR. Then we'll head to the graphic settings. There they are, VR graphics. We'll select that. We're currently in TAA mode at high-end settings. I'm going to stay in TAA mode, but I'm going to turn the global rendering quality down to medium. Just a quick note here for those of you that are changing set your VR settings. Very often, all too often, they don't stick. You need to set them, exit back out, and then go back in. On this occasion, it's stuck. It's a sim bug. Now that we've got our medium settings, let's turn the render scale up. Quite a lot of fun just experimenting with this. Currently, we're at 3072 by 3216. Let's push that up a little bit to say 120, so we're at 3686 by 3859. And let's go and see what sort of performance we can get. Graphic settings have been turned down, render scale has been pushed up by 20%. As always, we just give it a few seconds to settle down, but it looks like we're going to stick with 90 FPS. The level of clarity has improved somewhat, however the level of detail has understandably 
reduced, particularly noticeable on the buildings. Latency down to 37 milliseconds and frame time 3 milliseconds, which, well, that's excellent. As I'm using Virtual Desktop, you may be wondering what are my Virtual Desktop settings, so let's have a quick look at those. So let's just pause the flight and we'll come out of VR, back to our Virtual Desktop, and we'll bring up the Virtual Desktop menu. Now, where's my controller? There it is. So let's just bring up the menu. Then we can bring up our settings. There it is. Menu up. This is not a settings guide, so we'll just have a look at the streaming settings. I'm using godlike mode. Headset is at 90Hz refresh rate. VR bitrate is set automatically. I have synchronous space warp on. It's a very good implementation. Very little artifacting. I recommend either have it disabled or always on. Don't use automatic. It's erratic. I've got super resolution enabled, which in godlike mode is really just a sharpener. And the performance overlay, of course. Well, enough of that. Let's get back to flying. Of course, to use virtual desktop in godlike mode, you do need a fairly hefty or beefy PC. Let's now head back into VR. And we're back in the cockpit. Just going to recenter my head. There we are. And we're good to go. And we can go and explore some of the scenery on the other bank of the river that looks like a church or something over there. So let's go over there and have a look. I must say I think I prefer TAA and high-end at standard or default resolution as opposed to the higher resolution but with less detail. Well, it is a church and it certainly does look handcrafted to me. We'll just do a quick fly past and uh, turn and have another look. Then we'll experiment with another setting which has become my favorite, to be honest. Tight turn now. Once again, this is very often where you'll see juddering, where you're doing a tight turn and you're pretty low to the ground. Frame rate dropped to 88, now back to 90. There's the church, we can just do a quick flyby. A little bit of juddering was apparent there. Now time to head back to the airport. But before we do, Time to try out another setting, which actually is my favorite, with the Quest 3 with the 5090. So once again, we're going to head to the settings menu, then VR, and then the VR graphics. This time I'm coming out of TAA and going to DLSS. I'm going to leave it in quality mode. But for the global rendering quality, I'm going to bump that up to ultra. Every step Every time you change one of the parameters, it asks you to confirm, which is very frustrating, I must say. That's high end. One more, and we'll be at ultra. There it is. So we've changed to DLSS quality mode and have the global rendering at default ultra. Now let's see what sort of performance we can get out of the Quest 3. Choosing quality mode, resolution would have been set back to default. Back into VR and the frames are settling down and once again we've got 90 fps the cockpit instruments remain nice and clear and easily readable as does the gns 430 i must say i was impressed that the level of artifacting is nominal hardly noticeable at all and if it is noticeable well it's only really in the external views frame rate varying from 87 to about 90 fps latency at 46 milliseconds and frame time, if that's accurate, 2 milliseconds, well, that's very good indeed. And the flight itself, well, it's absolutely super smooth. Just look at these gorgeous colors. Well, I hope this smoothness comes out in the video. There's our airport again in front of us. We're going to plan on a little bit of a long landing, as I spotted a hangar at the other end of the runway. As we're on Ultra, the clarity in the headset is absolutely wonderful. We can pick up the detail of the buildings, we can also see the foliage on the end there. Looks like some banana plants as well as palm trees. Bit of a bounce, uh, not too unusual for my landings. We did come in rather fast trying to wash off some of that speed. We're down. And of course the 1590 GPU is exceptionally, extraordinarily expensive. This video is not to say that you should buy it. It's just to show you what sort of performance you can get if you plumb for a 1590 with a Quest 3 headset in VR. As always, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourself. See you again soon. And ciao for now.